Okay, welcome everyone. The Senate will now come to order. I'd like to start today off with a land acknowledgement. And since ASG is a body under the University of San Diego and the University of San Diego occupies uh, Kumeyaay land, I would like to start with the land acknowledgement that is used at USD. I want to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Kumeyaay Nation. I want to pay respect to the citizens of the Kumeyaay Nation, both past and present, and their continuing relationship to their ancestral lands. Senator Alexa Andrade will now take roll. If you're a proxy, uh, when the Senator's name that you're proxying for is called, just say proxy. Hey y'all. Um, okay, so AJ Armenta. Um, Alana De La Torre. Here. Thank you. Um, I'm present. Um, Angelo Tharp. Okay. Um, Ari. Um, Benjamin, Benjamin Tebow. Here. Brooke Powell. Proxy. Thank you. Cecilia Baron. Here. Thank you. Danielle Peña. Here. Elena Cruz. Ezra Wheeler. Fantasy Bias. Here. Uh, Lauren Fettis. Here. Madeline Wu. Here. Uh, Max Donahoe. Here. Megan Womack. Here. Uh, Mia Soda. Sabrina Mendoza Weintier. Uh, Sean Kenny. Here. Thomas Riley. Here. Tiana Fee. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to approval of today's agenda. Are there any motions? Lauren? I move to approve today's agenda. Second. There is a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve today's agenda. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes. Motion passes. The agenda has been approved. On to approval of last week's minutes. Are there any motions? Lauren? I move to approve last week's minutes. Second. There is a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve last week's minutes. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes. Thank you, motion passes. The minutes have been approved. On to report from Speaker of Senate, 
So as you all know, President Harris will be attending Senate next week. All the questions and topics that were discussed at a previous Senate meeting have been sent to him. So he does know um, what we would like to hear him talk about. Um, hopefully there's time for a Q&A portion as well. Um, and I'll also be reorganizing the order of the agenda so that we can maximize the time that we do have with President Harris. Um, and since it's kind of a big deal that the president of the university is visiting Senate, I would love if everyone could be there. I'll be sending out emails um, and having advisors be like, hey, you're gonna be there, right? Okay. Um, and if you can have your cameras on for the meeting, that would be amazing. That'd be really nice. And if you do have your cameras on, if everyone could wear either in their ASG polo which were given out last year or their ASG sweatshirt. Um, that would be cool as well. So maybe we could get a cute photo op moment. Um, and that's it for updates. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? If not, we can move on to report from committee chairs and coordinators. Hey everyone, no new updates from the Academics Committee. Um, I will be doing the ID and E Committee uh, update and currently right now, uh, today we have a presentation for the ID e care packages with Senator Precious and I, and then Senator Ari is currently working on uh, her talk show and that's about all we have going on right now. Hi everyone. So the student org committee, um, an update from us is that the first meeting for the student org mentorship program when we're gonna have all the orgs come together and meet each other. Um, is planned for next week. And also a reminder that the student organization award ceremony is going to be on USD underscore ASG on Instagram. And we'll be doing a live stream at 1230 Pacific Daylight Time. Hello, everyone. We have no new updates from Student Life. Hi, guys. I don't have any updates this week either. Hey y'all. Um, so again, we're still celebrating or we're still recognizing, sorry, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Um, so follow at USD Care, at Be Well USD, at USD Women's Commons. Um, they have helpful information and resources related to sexual assault prevention and support. And um, there's an update regarding the Take Back the Night event. It will now be a hybrid format next Thursday, April 29th, starting at 8 p.m. It will be both a socially distanced on campus and Zoom live stream. Um, in person will accommodate 45 USD community members, although it will prioritize students first for this option. Um, so join in to join in community to honor survivors of sexual violence through art, storytelling, and conversation. Um, I'll drop a link to register for. Um, to indicate which format you'd like to attend in the chat. And then as many of you are aware, the university announced that they will require fall 2021 students enrolled at USD to submit proof of vaccination against COVID-19 to live in the residential halls or attend in-person classes. Please refer to the email sent out on Monday from the president and from the COVID-19 action team for more helpful details regarding this important update. And the student health center is working to obtain vaccines and you can find vaccines availability at myturn.ca.gov or vaccinefinder.org. Hello everybody, um, happy Earth Day. First off, I'm today gonna be gathering feedback on the sustainable goods database. And then as always, I highly encourage you to check out the sustainability module on Blackboard. And then 
later this week or tomorrow, I'll be meeting with Madeline to discuss how we could do a mini presentation on sustainability uh, during the student work conference for next fall. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, no new updates, just the same, uh, but I like to keep it on record every week to at least mention um, USD accessibility concerns and support needed for them as always. Um, and then the, like I mentioned as well, the DLDRC got natural reader approved for USD students. Again, this is a service where you can upload PDFs, um, whether they're scanned or Word documents or whatever they are, you can upload them to this subscription service and then they will um, do the speech to text or text to speech. So um, all your text will just like be voiced out to you. Um, it can be helpful um, if you find it helpful. So you do not have to be registered with a DLDRC to have a subscription, just know that. So um, just feel free to reach out to this disability services at san diego.edu email um, or myself, and then you will get um, an invitation to accept the subscription. And this will last um, in for the rest of like the the 2021 year. So even until I'm um, over the summer and then next fall, um, this could help with like exams or just leftover readings that you have. Um, so please let me know so you can get signed up. Thank you. Moving on to our next agenda item reports from ASG executive board members. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry, my camera is going to be off because my Wi-Fi has been rather atrocious today. So um, with that, I'll be still be able to give my updates. Um, so the first one is Finance Committee um, has been hard at work uh, over the course of Monday at Tuesday and Tuesday. Um, and they are still going to continue to be going hard to work um, tonight. Um, I will not be there due to some prior engagements, but they will still be there working their tails off on this unanticipated trilogy of finance committees we have been having as um, our chief of staff uh, has referred to them. Um, so that will be lovely. Um, and then yesterday I met with the endowment, um, uh, I, well, not with the scholarship committee, but I met with the person in charge of scholarships at USD. Um, and that's all set up for the fall. So the endowment's all set up um, for the next group of ASG people to work on. Um, the framework's entirely set, so it should be a pretty quick transition. Um, I can imagine that work is going to be getting started over the summer in terms of actually getting people to apply. Um, so yeah, that, that's completed basically for in terms of this year's group's uh, role. Um, and then the VPSA search, the Vice President for Student Affairs search, um, we have interviews tomorrow. Um, I have a total of around 16 hours of interviews over the course of Friday and Saturday. Um, so it's going to be a pretty, pretty um gnarly weekend to say the least but you know what it's worth it um it, uh, we're going to put in the time and effort to make sure that our next vice president for student affairs um is able to work on behalf of students and be willing to listen to students in terms of the needs and wants um to help improve the university so um where i can provide updates i will provide updates um it's just a lot of the information is kind of pretty confidential and i'd get in trouble if i shared anything um so um, I will continue to see what I can update you on with regards to that. But um, everyone, uh, you have a great weekend. We only have two more Senate meetings after this one. Um, so it's pretty wild. Keep up the good work for these two uh, more Senate meetings. Um, and yeah, have a great one. How's it going, everybody? Happy Thursday. Uh, Justin has a few updates, starting with the Undergraduate Curriculum Committee. Uh, they had their final meeting of the 2021 or 2020 to 2021 academic school year this week. They discussed several courses uh, and program proposals. The program proposal that was approved was moving some curriculum around with, uh, within the Environmental and Ocean Sciences Department. Now a Bachelor of Science program will be available in several uh, EOSC avenues to go along with the current BA program. Uh, this is because the current BA program is already comparable to the BS programs um, that, other similar, that other similar universities offer. Uh, and by accommodating a new BS course, which simply adds a few extra science courses, Students can benefit from the added depth. Uh, and the new updates apply to the following tracks, in marine ecology and environmental science. The university is accepting California college requirements for core, and they are looking at the current critical thinking, information literacy, or the CTIL area. 
Um, and some of the things that, or some of the questions they're asking is, do we keep them, do we drop them, divorce them, or merge with the library? Uh, and then moving on to residential life, the housing capacities are returning to, uh, to relatively normal levels. Um, there are no quads or triples. Rooms will be capped as doubles. And only affects, or this only affects the Camino and Founder residents, Maher and SAPs, since those are the only halls that accommodate triples and doubles, or sorry, quads. Uh, and then for the COVID restrictions, the hope is that they will be able to be, or sorry, the hope is that they will be lifted in the fall and they will follow the current CDC guidelines. And if anything, there will be masks. And that's all for today. Hi everyone, uh, happy Earth Day. Uh, so just wanted to say thank you to everyone who joined us yesterday for bingo night. It was very fun. And also for stopping by if you were able to for our grab and go sustainable picnic last Friday. It was super nice. There is never more than like two or three people at a time. So it was just all pretty in sunset. Um, it was all nice to see people in person too. Anyway, uh, our end of the year giveaway is now closed. So just wanted to let y'all know um, we're currently working with the vendor on making sure all the sizes and everything's worked out. So hopefully if you sign up for one, you will hear more information and details of when that will be sent out to you soon. Um, also, starting today, we are having our Earth Days virtual challenge. Uh, so please be sure to go find our Instagram. It is the USD at USD underscore TPB. You can learn different sustainable habits, take photos and show it to us. Um, and if you come in and share three friends who also practice sustainable habits, you'll have a chance to win some really awesome sustainable prizes out or a spike ball set. Uh, I just want to note the spike ball set's not the sustainable part. It's just to emphasize going outside and being active. Um, and you have until this Sunday 425 to send in your um, chances for entries. And then also our TPV, our final event of the year is upcoming um, to celebrate Asian Pacific Islander Desi American Heritage Month uh, the first week. So it is May 6th, May 6th, Thursday, May 6th at 7 p.m. You'll get more details, but I can promise you that it's a super fun event. So I hope to see you all there and to sign up. Um, and that is all for my updates today. Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Uh, I don't have too many updates this week, just that the constitution, you're getting that today. Um, and that if approved, um, the constitution will be made available to, available to students for 10 class days, uh, so two weeks, and then they will be able to vote on it in on their portal, which will, and they'll also get this information like in an email, but just as a general procedural uh, insight, into how the amendment would be made official. There's a 10 day wait period. Um, and then the judicial bylaws, trying my very best to get them to you next Thursday, but they're with judicial, uh, with general counsel right now. So it's really just a waiting game on my part. Um, and the only other thing is the election results. I'm sure you've all been wondering if you didn't run, uh, you've been wondering what the results were. Um, we waited a little uh, until the appeal period finished so no more appeals can be filed um, just so that there's no confusion um, if someone ended up being disqualified or anything like that. So this is your official post appeal period um, results. So President Justice, Vice President Ari, a uh, very long list of at large, Manchester Humanities, Social Sciences and Commuter Senators. There are vacancies. Um, you'll get more information uh, in the future from next year's leadership team, so next year's judicial branch, president, vice president, and exec on how they are gonna go about filling the vacancies. But as far as who's actually in these positions now, uh, this is the list and that is all. Hi everyone, happy Thursday. I don't believe Rafa is here, so I'll just go ahead. Um, but just a reminder that the Linda Vista Multicultural Fair is happening this Saturday. If you're still interested in helping out and with tabling or anything, please um, private message me on Zoom right now. That'd be really helpful. Um, another reminder, again, for marketing committee, as always, if you have any marketing requests, please send it our way. Our last committee meeting is on May 6th, so this is the last call for requests. Um, I'm currently working on an infographic for all of pretty much everything that you've done this year, including projects, initiatives, resolutions, and campaigns. So I'm going to send a document to the chat right now. Um, I would just ask if you all could just look at it. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So 
if there's something I missed, please feel free to add to that doc or if there's anything you want to change like wording wise. Again, um, that's a working document for you all to access. So please take a look at that. And then just to uh, update you all about the masks, we're cur I'm currently working with the chief of staff, Isaiah, to um, get that order going. Right now, we're just selecting the mask type that we want and then hopefully ordering them as soon as possible. It just took us a while to get in communication with getting the correct uh, format for the design that we're putting on the mask, but looks like it's going um, pretty well for now. So yeah, thank you all. All right, long time no see everybody. Um, as always, please, if you're a member of the public and would like some credits for Grubhub, uh, place your email in the chat. And then also for the ASG Banquet Awards nomination form, um, I know that the due date is tomorrow, but I'm going to extend that to um, midnight by Sunday. So please, if you have extra time, um, make sure to fill out that form. Again, you don't have to fill out every single one of the award nominations. I believe there are a few um, that don't have many nominations yet. Um, and also please, if you do nominate some people, uh, make sure to give a, a why they should be nominated. Um, it, it makes it a little bit harder to discuss, you know, nominations when there's just a name, no like reasoning behind it. Uh, so please make sure to have fill that out with, um, uh, you know, like information about the person as well. So that's it for me. Thank you everybody and happy Earth Day. Thanks everyone. Moving on to our first item under new business, presentation of ASG constitution changes. So Anaya, the floor is yours. So I'm gonna share my screen right now. Um, before I start, is this uh, zooming in, is that enough? Like, can you read it properly? Can we get a thumbs up from people if this is zoomed in enough? Cool. Okay, cool. Um, so as I mentioned in my updates, but I'll just touch on this again, to approve the constitution, it requires a two thirds majority vote. And then there's a 10 day wait period for students to review it and not have the chance to vote on it. And then once that 10 day period is done, then they can vote on it through their portal. There's not a set amount of time as far as how long they have to vote on it, but I was planning on giving them um, like four days. So like a weekend and two school days, just to have as much time as possible. So that was just my plan going forward. So I think the last day of classes would be the end of their um, a chance to vote. Um, but to go through the amendments, I'm actually gonna start by just on the summary sheet because that's pretty much all the amendments um, put in a nice concise format. Uh, and when I need to, I'll refer back to the, um, the constitution itself. Uh, if you have questions while I'm going through this, please feel free to raise your hand um, and just ask a question um, and I'll try to answer as we're going. Um, so first is adding TPB to the constitution by adding an article. Um, TPB is not mentioned in our constitution whatsoever besides um, the TPB chair. And it seems a little odd to me that because they functionally are fourth branch of ASG, um, they don't necessarily govern in terms of making rules the way Senate does, but they function as part of the team. So it just seemed a little odd for them not to be um, included in our constitution. Um, and everyone who I talked to agreed. Um, this, the information from TPP's article is nothing new. This is nothing that uh, Senate hasn't approved before. I believe Senate last approved amendments to TPP's own bylaws. TPP has their own bylaws if you didn't know in spring of 2019, so around the time that our constitution was last approved. Um, so I just took the information from there um, and added it to the constitution. So again, nothing new, nothing seen before. This would not functionally change HG in any way. Um, it's just a formality of adding them in there just to make it official on paper for people who aren't part of ASG looking in so they can understand this better. Uh, the second one, I should say this is ordered from kind of major changes to minor changes. So the second kind of major change is removing the quota under the College of Arts and Sciences uh, Senator breakdown. So before this current constitution, uh, I think when I was a Senator, there was like six College of Arts and Sciences Senators and anyone from College of Arts and Sciences could be uh, a represent. So it didn't have to be like, a certain number of arts, humanities, natural sciences, or social sciences majors. It could just be any combination of those. 
with this new constitution, they wanted to try out having one of the category of art, one humanities, one natural sciences, and one social sciences senator. Um, this is difficult for a couple of reasons. One being that the College of Arts and Sciences doesn't necessarily have schools labeled arts, humanities, natural, or social sciences. Those are general categoriz categorizations of majors, but that's not an actual reflection of how the College of Arts and Sciences works. Um, but we got through that. We kind of figured out what majors would fall under those four categories, but not schools. However, there's just, we found it to be this past year uh, restrictive in terms of there, let's say there wasn't a lot of interest from natural sciences majors. Um, so you have people in CAS who are capable and have in HG in the past represented all CAS, say from a humanities major who wants to be um, a senator, an academic senator, but they couldn't because they didn't meet the natural science quota, for example. So this is more of an efficiency thing. Um, and it's not like uh, humanities majors haven't in the past represented natural science majors just fine. Um, so that was the second one. Third, oh, go Lauren. Lauren. Oh, sorry. Does that mean that like, I know like Ceci and I were both um, elected to like designated roles. So then will we just both be general cast senators? Yes, so if this was approved, the, the judicial branch has the right to restructure um, the positions as needed. So you would form, you would basically, your title would just be less specific basically. All right. Uh, so for number three is uh, addition of a GPA requirement and a requirement of no academic or disciplinary probation while serving on ASG. I should say that this is not necessarily an addition of a requirement. This is something that's already existed in the election bylaws and I believe other places. This has long existed in ASG. This is just that it wasn't written into this constitution, but again, it was in the election bylaws and has been there for as long as I'm aware. So, yeah. Sabrina? I had a question um, because I, we've been talking in the academics committee about uh, GPA requirements and how it can make it inaccessible to participate on ASG. So we're talking with Dr. Avery about like a case by case basis because for example, transfer students, our, our GPAs are different. We come in with a 0.0, .0 GPA and it's like based off of so many less units. So it can be hard for us to get that 2.5 right away. Um, so we were trying to suggest like a case by case basis. I would there be a way after this is approved if uh, as it's written right now it's for that or would we not be able to amend it? I was just wondering how like the formality of that. So um, for transfer students, at least the way I'm thinking of how I would approach it. I think I would approach, um, or the elections committee would approach transfer students in the way that we do freshmen in that we don't block freshmen from running and joining ASG just because they have no GPA. Um, it's just that once you have a GPA, it has to be um, like a passing grade. So 2.5 is like a C plus average. So make sure, making sure you, once you have an academic workload that you can handle it well and can take on an extracurricular so I don't think that transfer students not having a GPA would, would harm them in being able to join ASG, um, or at least it shouldn't. Sabrina? Well, what I meant is that, it, for example, I got like a C regular, right? And so I had a few of those. And so it took me longer to get my GPA to 2.5 because I also have less units overall at USD. Like everyone needs like 140 units to graduate. Um, I need less since I came in with 100 units. And so my point is, is like for us to get to a 2.5 can just, I was at a 2.499 for a few semesters. Like, and I, I was getting A's, but it just can be really hard to get to that 2.5. So that's why we were suggesting like that case by case basis, because um, it can just exclude students who are so close, but we just, because of other situations, can't get right to the 2.5. So I'm just wondering if we wanted to say like a case by case basis for GPA, would it 
be something then we would also amend in the constitution as well as the election bylaws or just I, so I could understand how that works. Does that make sense? Yes, I think I know what you're saying. But before I respond, Lauren, did you have something to add to that or is it something a little different? Let me speak, Lauren. Okay. Uh, Lauren. Um, yeah, I thought that I, I'm looking for it now and I can't find it now, of course. I thought that it said in in the actual amendment that cases of students below a 2.5 would be considered on a case by case with advisory from SSS. Did I imagine that or I thought that I read it? Um, can, before I speak to this, Jen, could you or one of the advisors shed light on how this would work? Because I haven't encountered this, so I'm not gonna even try to pretend like I can speak on this. Can I speak, Maya? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> this is a really, this is a question, it's a little bit complicated, but to answer your question, Lauren, uh, I'm not familiar with that content, um, uh, but if it's there, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that in terms of the ASG uh, documents, standards, bylaws. Um, to answer the other question that Sabrina mentioned or the other Senator mentioned, um, uh, yes, the constitution and the election bylaws can be amended in the future. It can always be amended based on the situation. However, for this particular case, it would have to be something that is supported and adjusted through the university. It's a standard for all student leaders, not just for ASG. So, and I know that the academics committee has been working on that, but, and that's the way to do that if it's gonna be possible. But I would say until it gets updated or changed in any fashion by the university, then that is something that in turn could lead to a constitution or an elections bylaw. And, and um, if it were to happen, yes, that would be amended and updated in both the elections bylaws and the constitution. I hope that that clarifies the questions asked. Um. I want to leave just a little time for someone to ask another question and make another comment on that. But if there's nothing there, uh, then I'll move on. Um, everything else from here is pretty like not intense. Um, so this next one is adding the responsibility of being the serving as the student organization discipline board to the judicial branch's job description. As some of you know, the judicial branch came into formation um, in spring 2019 when the constitution is added, but we didn't, justices weren't uh, uh, confirmed until end of fall 2019, uh, early spring 2020. And in that time, um, student affairs and SAI found uh, another avenue uh, that intersects student affairs and uh, ASG in terms of uh, the judicial branch serving as the discipline board for all ASG registered student organizations. Um, this isn't a very active group um, in terms of having many hearings, so it's not like adding a lot to the judicial branch's plate, but this is something that's, um, that we've expected to been, to serve as uh, for the entirety of my tenure as Chief Justice, so this is like just a formal change. Uh, next is something that we actually touched on at the beginning of this semester in terms of vacancy procedures for Senate executive team positions. So chairs, coordinators, uh, speaker pro temp and clerk of Senate. There was lack of clarity on who or how the Senate executive team or the speaker pro temp was appointed, uh, like a replacement was appointed. And early in the semester, the judicial branch decided to just revert back to the normal procedures that the speaker selects the people uh, in the summer slash fall. Um, and so that's what this says. You were already informed of this early in the semester, but this is just adding it to the constitution now. Uh, this next one was a suggestion from Fantasy actually about renaming the ID and E committee to ID, E and A with the A standing for accessibility in an effort to center uh, accessibility in ASU's work going forward. 
This doesn't necessarily change how the IDE committee functions per se, rather than just their goals. Um, and this is intended to absorb the work of the Universal Design Ad Hoc Committee. Um, so that the ad hoc committee doesn't, isn't like a permanent ad hoc committee or made as a new separate committee, but just again, absorbed into IDE's work. Um, the next one is something that's kind of functioning this year is removing the requirement of an athletics commission within the Senate. So um, with the ambiguity of athletics this year, I don't believe the athletics commission was working. Uh, the athletics commission is a committee chaired by the athletics chair. Um, but based off of last year's feedback from last year's athletics chair, um, he said that it was rather restrictive. Uh, a requirement of this commission is to have two student athletes alongside two bullpit members and a member of TPB serving as part of it. And it was just very difficult to find student athletes who could dedicate that amount of time to like a full year position. And so um, he'd already proposed possibly getting rid of it. And then this year, uh, we tried it and it seems to be working fine. Again, the, it's just removing the requirement and the restrictions around having two student athletes and stuff like that. Um, but of course the athletics uh, coordinator can choose to have some variation of, of, an, of an athletics commission, just not a requirement. Um, the next two are related um, in terms of amending job descriptions. So as some of you may remember at training, our last training of this semester, uh, Ryer and Associate Justice suggested uh, introducing a historian position to document uh, written and photographic uh, histories for, a, for future ASU teams to reference. Uh, the, judu the judicial branch discussed it and we found that these two responsibilities could be absorbed into existing roles. So the PR chair and chief of staff, and we thought it'd be a little inefficient uh, to have a whole position just dedicated just dedicated to those two things. Um, so they would spend a lot of time sitting around. So the PR chair would take the responsibility of coordinating all photographic and videographic documentation of ASG events. And the chief of staff would absorb the responsibility of writing a uh, written history of all major initiatives, discussion points, um, motions, et cetera, during each semester. And specifically, I'll show you the wording on that one actually, um, it's their job to do it twice a semester. So they would have to do it, um, if I can find it, here it is. They would have to do it in the middle and at the very end of the semester um, for both the spring and the fall as just a way to ensure that they have accurate um, detailing of the events because you know, at the end of the semester, things that were important in the middle of the semester don't necessarily feel as important or as major sometimes in retrospect. You just forget things, just how busy ASG is. So this is the specific uh, wording there, but yeah, those are those two. Next was just an oversight. My job description didn't say that I must cast a vote, but it said it elsewhere and it says it in every other associate justice and parliamentarian job description. So it was just fixing that. Um, and then another oversight was that the parliamentarian wasn't mentioned as an ex officio member of the student senate. Um, I think this is because before the student uh, parliamentarian used to be a senator, but they no longer are. So I think they just forgot to add parliamentarian as an ex officio member. Uh, then the next three are just naming things. So we renamed the chairs of the subcommittee. So athletics, health and wellness and sustainability to coordinators. Um, you, all may be like, what? That's already the name. We gave the test from this year. So that's not technically their name in the constitution, but um, we found that that's actually clearer to people looking from the outside um, as far as what their job is supposed to do. So coordinators uh, was tried, tested, and we think that's the way to go. Uh, next super superficial thing is changing judicial cabinet to the judiciary. This is just something that we found was more efficient when writing our bylaws to refer to ourselves as the judiciary rather than the cabinet or whatnot. And then last was changing all mention of associated students or AS to ASG and associated student government. Um, there was just typos left from the old constitution. So that's everything. Um, I know I kind of went through those last ones fast, but they're super superficial. Um, 
Does anyone have any questions regarding anything that I said here? Or any additions that you'd like to make? Or motions? Sure. I had a question about part of the constitution that I don't necessarily think was amended, but kind of confused me a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. It's, oh, and now I'm gonna find it again. An article right now, article 10, section one, subsection B. I don't know, I guess I was just confused when it talks about if like a president resigns from their position mm -hmm. and then the vice president succeeds them, like what the actual procedure is for like replacing the vice president. Um, I believe a special election would be held. Okay. Yes. Cool. Any other questions, comments, motions? Sabrina? I move to approve the amendments put forth by the judiciary. The judiciary, I guess, is what they're called. Second. There is a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve the amendments to the constitution. Is there any further discussion? Just as a reminder, this will require two thirds approval. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes. Meg, can you please cast your vote? Thank you, motion passes. The constitution amendments have been approved. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. Okay, moving on to our next line item under new business is a discussion of standards for virtual learning resolution. So, Senator Sabrina, the floor is yours. You can share your screen if you'd like. Okay, thank you. Okay. Also, sorry, before you start, Sabrina, um, I would just like to ask for senators who do feel comfortable, ASG members who do feel comfortable and are able to turn your camera on, it would be much appreciated just so the speakers do feel like they are presenting to actual people and not just uh, little blank screens, um, but just a gentle ask. Can you all see it very well? Do you, would you like me to zoom in or is it okay as is? Good, awesome, thank you. So um, this resolution has been a labor of love and a lot of collaboration with a lot of different communities on campus. Um, so thank you, sorry. <laughs> so thank you to everyone who's um, helped me with this. Essentially what this resolution is about is adopting equitable policies for remote learning. And my hope is that once we adopt them for remote learning, they'll carry over to in-person learning as well. So it's um, kind of just giving us a place to start with equity in the classroom. A big uh, part of this resolution is talking about trauma-informed teaching pedagogies. If you're not sure what a trauma-informed teaching pedagogy is, that's okay. Um, I didn't know what it was until I actually had a few classes that used them. For me personally, what the big difference was, was being seen as a person holistically and being more a part of like a community, um, having more empathy put towards me because I was having, you know, issues with completing an assignment, maybe because I had my daughter, or maybe because as a first gen student, I didn't have this or that resource. And so it wasn't 
that I was just seen as one part of myself. I was able to be seen completely as all parts of myself and all parts of me, the emotional, the cognitive, the physical, were all being seen and supported. And that's just really important right now because I think we're all seeing how intersecting identities really impact one's ability to learn and contribute to um, the class. So having um, teachers try and empower students with marginalized identities is really important. So in this resolution, um, you'll see that I, I collaborated with the CEE because they already have resources about said teaching pedagogies because believe it or not, faculty don't know about them um, and they're really wonderful. I put in just different kind of reminders because my hope is that faculty will be open to hearing these suggestions as well about students. Um, you know, we have to pay for our own electricity and that's really expensive and we have to pay for our own Wi-Fi and that's expensive as well. So the way we're learning isn't necessarily accessible even like from that standpoint, whereas in person, you know, we aren't paying the bills to for the electricity when we're sitting in the classroom. So we're just all these different factors that are going on. And so I just really wanted to holistically take a screenshot of what students are experiencing right now, because in my personal experience and opinion, while the pandemic is getting better because we do have the vaccine, it still has been going on for over a year. homelessness or housing insecurity, food insecurity, they've lost their jobs, um, and et cetera, et cetera. Like there, it's just been, a, it's been really hard for a lot of us. And I don't want people to think, oh, it's gotten better when that isn't true for everyone. And it can be really uncomfortable outing yourselves to tell your professors, well, I, I don't know if I have enough rent for next month. And I'm very concerned about that. I'm going to pick up an extra shift instead of, um, going to your office hours, you know? So if professors are just able to come in understanding that this is the reality we're still living in and students come from all different backgrounds and they deserve dignity and respect and just the benefit of the doubt kind of an empathy, I think that can be really powerful. Um, I also was just talking about just the barriers um, that students face again, because I think COVID has really amplified what has already existed. And so I really wanted to put it out there directly um, because I think sometimes faculty who maybe have been tenured for a couple decades might not be as in touch to students who are first gen lower income. And you know, this is our first time in university we may have different experiences. And so them seeing this on um, paper can help them kind of reevaluate their teaching styles and their expectations. I um, also was uh, like, I've been trying to hear what students have been wanting and needing. And so that's also what I was trying to do with this. Uh, not everyone feels comfortable displaying their camera. I don't always feel comfortable displaying myself. If I'm chest feeding my daughter, I don't really wanna display that. And that should be something that students should be able to decide when they display their cameras, as well as like how um, they display it. If you're giving a presentation, maybe you display it, but if you're in a setting where that's just not possible because you have multiple people behind you or in your house and they don't wanna be on camera, like that shouldn't be something you have to explain. Um, and so that's what I was really just trying to do is just to advocate because I've heard a lot of students kind of say, well, it is really uncomfortable because I sh this is a shared space and I have my whole family here with me and it's, you know, it's my professor makes us because it, I don't count like I'm in it, I'm in class. And so I just was really trying to advocate for those students and the students who have Wi-Fi issues, because I think everyone here has probably had Wi-Fi issues at some point and you realize that's again out of your control and we shouldn't be penalized if while we're trying our best to attend class the internet doesn't work um, but yet i've heard of students having that issue and so i really wanted to amplify um, their needs of equity and empathy uh, furthermore i um 
found the uh, Changemaker Hub had created a basic needs acknowledgement. It's hyperlinked here if you're interested in it. And essentially it encourages faculty um, to put in like just basic needs uh, resources for their students in their syllabi. And I think that's a really good start. And I think that should be something that faculty already do. I feel like sometimes um, resources are cut from students. Uh, someone As someone who is lower income, I didn't know about the food pantry until I was extreme experiencing extreme food insecurity. Uh, and that shouldn't be the case. It would have been really nice if my professor had kind of made themselves a resource or put it in their syllabi that I could talk with them about that. We don't always know who we can go to talk to. And since a professor is someone you consistently see, I think that it can be a reasonable ask to say that they should be able to refer you to proper resources. Um, I also am encouraging them to work with the CEE. Um, the CEE has been amazing and they created a shared uh, Google Doc. So it's open for collaboration throughout the whole USD community. Students can look at it if they're curious and they wanna kind of see what other options there are for their teachers to use. I know that some faculty has, have felt like their departments don't really give them guidance on how to better adapt for remote learning. Um, and so this is a really good resource. The CE has been working really hard to make accessible. They've tried different modes or mediums and the Google Doc is gonna be the one they're going with in the future. So I um, wanted to kind of do a call to action for faculty to utilize it and collaborate since I know this sense of community is different right now than what they're used to and the resources they may have normally so I wanted to remind them of something that already exists within the USD community for them and then um, I mentioned here uh, pass fail and I just kind of again advocated that students should be able to have autonomy um, we should be able to have this autonomy because that's what gives us equity. Um, in my opinion, uh, this semester has been really hard because I was expecting it to be a bit different. Um, just with the remote learning, I just kind of had different expectations than what it was like. And so I don't know everybody else's experiences, but for a lot of people who've spoken to me, they felt similarly and they wish they had more autonomy and kind of more say. So I think um, it can be really, powerful to just again remind everyone that hey this is something that we really the, the student body really cares about and they're asking for just compassion and empathy um the cee again said that they would love to make themselves a resource so people are able to reach out and um just utilize them and then I made sure to make it clear that if anyone has any specific questions about this resolution it's ASG that they contact and I hyperlinked um, the email to us as well, just to make that distinguishing um, factor because I don't want people reaching out to CEE about this resolution. I want them reaching out for their specific resources. Since they are only a three person office, it's not fair to overwhelm them with questions that are meant for us. And then um, lastly, I wanted to acknowledge the late Dr. Melissa Halter. Um, she spent a lot of time and energy resourcing, uh, researching a lot of resources related to trauma-informed um, classroom environments. And I think that we really need to take that time to make sure everyone knows that that's what she did. She really was helping students like us. Um, so I wanted to add that in as well. So yeah, if anyone has any questions or any concerns, uh, please feel free to let me know. Lauren? Yeah, I know one of the where at, well, first of all, thank you, Sabrina. This is wonderful and we appreciate all your hard work and all of the academic committee's hard work. Um, I think, I was wondering, I know one of the where as addresses time zones. One of the problems that like I have and I know some of my constituents that are on the East Coast and like out of the country as well. Also, like some of our professors refuse to record their classes. 
I was wondering if there could be a be it further resolved added to I unless I can unless that is in there and I missed it. I'm sorry if I did. Sorry. Um, I we have this presently. So the equitable learning environment for students who are not in PST slash PDD, especially for activities that require synchronous attendance, such as exams, presentations, um, may require accommodations uh, in order to exist. We encourage faculty and students to work together to create reasonable accommodations. Would you want it to more directly say that it should be recorded or what would, um, would you want it more specific, I guess? Lauren. Yeah, I feel like I would appreciate if it said that directly somewhere, just because like, even if you're not in a different time zone, like the, like they can make asynchronous, like they can make activities available for you if you can't attend synchronous classes because, and like have like a discussion post, like, okay, these are the things we talked about in class could you like make a response to them instead of like recording class so that we can like directly like find out what the discussion in class was, if that makes sense. No, that totally makes sense. I, I think that um, like classes are supposed to be recorded, but a lot of mine haven't been, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm not sure, like in some of my professors don't make their PowerPoints available because they say like they own the intellectual property, so they don't want it shared. So I'm not sure if that's like why people aren't recording is because they feel that it's like their intellectual property, but I can um, add in something like that because to my understanding, they were supposed to be being recorded. Lauren? Yeah, I know personally last semester, I had a professor say that they didn't want to invade their students like privacy by recording things, but I think at the same time with like the other, um, be it further resolves in this resolution, like it makes it clear that students should be able to turn off their camera if they don't feel comfortable being recorded, Does it, if, that, like, if that follows. Any other feedback or comments from anyone? All right, then I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you everyone for your time and energy. And feel free to email me, I guess, if you have anything that you think of over the weekend. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I know that it's been a long time coming, so I'm excited to see it in Senate. Okay, moving on to our next line item, which is presentation of inclusion, diversity, and equity care packages request. So Max and Precious, you have the floor. Feel free to share your screen. Hey everyone, uh, can you see this? All right, perfect, thank you. Um, so today Precious and I are gonna be presenting the ID and E care packages. Uh, this was an idea that we had coming up for the spring semester and we thought it would be something fun to do for the whole community. So the purpose of this care package is to provide support to the USD community as students prepare for their finals. And this can be a challenging time for a lot of people. So this is the perfect little gift to get people excited about finishing up the school year and having a good time. And the IDD, IDE twist on these care packages is implementing some gifts to create relaxation for students while also providing them an opportunity to grow in cultural awareness. Uh, the belief behind this is to continue an approach of change and diversity to the student body while being able to bring smiles and happiness towards others uh, during the end of the school year. And during, ed during dead hours of finals week from May 9th to the 16th, care packages will be given out to students by having either a pickup station at USC 
or delivering it to them if they are not their campus. So for the following uh, care package items we will have, we will have uh, Guayaki Yerba Mate in some of these boxes. We will have about 100 care packages in total. Affirmation notes, uh, a face mask to show some relaxation, a uh, handful of candy because who doesn't love candy? Just a little throwback to Halloween or something like that. Um, a URL code to a movie that educates on the cultural topics. That process is being currently worked on with the UFMC and other groups throughout USC. Uh, pamphlets for mental health. And then we will have a $15 Grubhub gift card with a list of recommended BIPOC food eateries throughout San Diego and throughout the country. And then finally, we'll have Red Bubble stickers in support of Pro Black Ally. So the package cost, um, so from packaging and mailing, it's estimated to be around 770 per box and then boxes with uh, USPS are free. Um, and so for face masks, it's um, for the self-care one, it's 11.99 for a 12 pack. Um, and we plan on getting nine packs for the 100 packages that we're aiming for. Um, and then that'll be bought through Amazon. Um, and then we're also doing the face masks um, the COVID face mask through the USC Torero store, and that's estimated to be around $7.95. Uh, Yerba Mate's will be free um, through Senator Max's um, program that he's involved in. Um, and then variety of candy, we're planning on getting about like five packs and just putting um, a handful into each package. Um, affirmation notes are free. Um, we'll just create those by hand. Um, and then pamphlets are free as well. URL code is free. And then the stickers are estimated to be around uh, 157 and the shipping's included into that price. Um, and then the $115 um, gift cards will be around 1500. And so the price per box will be $33 and 79 cents um, estimated. Um, and then the, the total cost will be 3,379 and 61 cents. And this is all for a hundred people. And so if approved, we also created a flyer which is under the next slide. Um, and so, yeah, thank you guys. Um, are there any questions or comments? I had a quick clarifying question for our parliamentarian. Sarah, it, are senators able to um, move for an increase in funding? I think that would require amending the um, the request itself, which I believe is a motion. But Chief Justice, if you're here, you can check me on that. Um, just for clarification on your question, Maya, I realized I did not raise my hand to speak. I apologize. Um, don't want to be one of those people. But um, are you saying like, can someone, let's say, I'm just picking on you because your hand is raised. Fantasy wanted to give them more than they asked for. Do they have to move to give more than they, than Max and Precious asked for? Is that what you're asking? Basically, what is the process if a senator wanted to increase or decrease, hypothetically, like the funding for the request? But yeah, I don't think you have to, um, you don't have to move to amend anything. Just in your motion, specify the amount that you want to give, and that's sufficient. Got it, okay. Just wanted to let everyone know the options um, in addition to approving or tabling. Um, Fancy? Yes, could, um, could we go back to the previous slide with the like line item? Yeah, thank you. AJ? Hi, firstly, thank you for putting this together. I love this. Um, full disclosure, I was the student that asked, um, could we do an increase? And the reason for that is because I've noticed that there's a $15 Grubhub gift card. Um, and I know part of the presentation, you were going to include BIPOC food eateries across the country. I just don't think that 15 is enough considering the inflation rate among, especially students that we mentioned before in the East Coast. Um, so I just wanted to take that into consideration and if y'all would be open to just talking about maybe a little increase on that line item. Sabrina. 
So it says it's for a hundred people or I guess students. Um, is it like on a first come first serve basis or who, how are these hundred people chosen? Um, Max or Precious, you don't have to raise your hand since y'all have the floor already. So whoever wants to answer, you can. Okay, so um, on the flyer, we have a QR code. And so basically we're gonna, uh, we have a, a Google form we're gonna send out to the student body. And basically it's the first 100 students to sign up. And I believe you can keep track of that. And so um, as soon as the 100 students sign up, we'll close the form. Thank you. Lauren? Um, in terms of a previous senator's comment, I would propose increasing the Grubhub amount to $25. If anybody has thoughts on that. Sabrina. I just wanted to ask or make a comment sorry about like making sure this is accessible since this is supposed to be like an inclusive thing um if there's a way that you're able to pick a time that would be most accessible for students because some students work so if they're working when this is released and this is something they'd really like to participate in and then it's already filled up since it is for only 100 people like just to be mindful about how you're sharing this and what platforms you're using because that's not necessarily accessible to everybody. And so that's just a comment I wanted to make about that. I think I can comment on that. So we did think about that a lot with only a hundred people being able to sign up for that. But realistically, if we have it opens to the whole student population. Therefore, you could have upwards of 5,000 people showing up possible on the room. And that would almost be way out of the budget. Sorry about the long number, by the way. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, but I, we, we talked about it and we thought 100 was quite reasonable, just seeing in the past with the other giveaways they've been doing in care packages. And then with the timing and pickup delivery, I think that's a great point. And we could probably do within our uh, pickup times have multiple times throughout a couple of days where people have multiple opportunities to get it, which would give you a higher chance of going up to get it easier. Alana. Yeah, in response to a previous Senator's suggestion, for raising the Grubhub to $25. I think we should keep it to, well, raise it to from 15, but raise it to 20, um, just to keep the Grubhub credit aligned with what ASGBC allocates to every other organization. Thank you. Fantasy? Um, thank you. I, I think that it should be 25 for the Grubhub credit. I mean, at least $20, but 25 just kind of helps with also like tipping and making sure like it's an adequate amount of funding to give to like all parties involved. Um, yeah, it's a lot. And especially if you don't have like free delivery or something like the add on is like seven to $10 already. And that's like, you know, if you get a cheap meal, then that's already like half your pricing. Um, I, I mean, I get how maybe like keep it to the same standard as the student orgs, but also, I don't know, this is kind of like interesting and new. Um, and so I think we can be flexible with that, but at least 20, but I'm open to doing, or like advocating for $25 Grubhub card. And then I was wondering where this, the it's coming from, like where the money would be coming from and then how much is left in that budget, I guess. So the money would be coming from our HG funding budget. And currently I was talking to uh, Jeff about this and the only thing we have spent so far is on Brooks initiative. So out of the $10,000 we've used, we've used about 2,500 from Brooks. So there's still quite a bit left to be used for the rest of the year. 
And that's kind of why we thought this was a great way to provide uh, more for all of the community instead for just the certain groups. I just want to clarify um, out of the $10,000 books um, initiative was funded and then there have been a couple other requests that are under the amount that is required to go to Senate and then that funding requests are approved or not approved by the Senate lead team. But overall, that funding has been under, I think, $300 total, but I can find the exact number. Um, Sean. Uh, as regarding the Grubhub credits, uh, just curious, do we know what theoretically the largest amount we'd be able to give is? Because I think I'm in favor of going to even at least like thirty dollars if possible. Because I guess considering food insecurities and all that, I think um, it would be beneficial to give as much money as we can for Grubhub credits. I think that'd be pretty. Uh, useful. So if we could do that, I think we should give as much as we are able to. Moments like these, I wish Rafa was here. Lupe? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you to the ID&E committee. Uh, I really do love this. It's really great. Uh, I just quite wanted to also follow up on the Grubhub. Uh, just mentioning as like a member of finance committee, it's also not just ASGBC, but for every but Grubhub credit, we follow the I forgot what it's called, um, precedent that it's $20 for every individual. Um, so I just wanted to keep that up and also emphasizing uh, this could also be something to be discussed with Rafa and saying like how this works and outside of finance, but just wanted to emphasize that with everything, the standard price uh, that was agreed upon was $20 GrubHub credit. Thank you, Lupe. Jen? Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, wanted to reiterate um, some thoughts. Uh, I would highly encourage, I under, I hear what many of you are saying about tips and costs. I completely understand that. And I am very mindful of that. I, I, I do want to stress the importance of the standards you all have set with Grubhub this, this year you've been starting it. Um, why would this be different than other, other standards that has been set uh, and been vetted? Also, um, as much as I know there, there is funds available and all that, uh, something that I talk about a lot when I'm advising students on these types of giveaways is cost per student. So you're talking now if you're going to 30 whatever dollars for Grubhub, that's gonna to lead to a higher cost per person in the overall package that you all are giving. Now, if that's what you all wanna do, that is fine. But I would also you know, think about maybe like, how are you able to make more packages with some things removed so that more people have access to this giveaway than the hundred people that are that this is being given out to, right? So I just want you to think that through in the big picture because um, it might be more about like equ equity in terms of how many students are able to get it rather than how much is being given for these 100 students. So just keep those things in mind. These are just suggestions, um, but wanted to at least provide that when, and I share this these thoughts with finance committee, with TVB, with all the students that um, we help advise. These are the standard things that we bring up in these types of conversations. We reached our allotted time for this agenda item. If anyone would like to make a motion to extend the time, they could do that now. AJ. I move to extend this line item by five minutes. Second. There's a motion on the floor, haven't been seconded to extend this line item by five minutes. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes.
Max, can you please cast your vote? Do you have any idea of how to raise your hand while you're sharing screen? Okay, you can verbally say if you want to raise your hand or not, and we can go from there. All right, I'll raise my hand. Okay, cool. Motion passes. Five minutes allotted. I know some people struggle with raising their hand while they're sharing their screen, so I understand. Um, I'm going to lower everyone's hands and go off of the stack that I had from before. So I had Anaya next up on stack. Yeah, I was just going to make a comment, I guess, adding on to Jen's about uh, when Finance Committee approves all their funding and whatnot, they have guidelines that they have to follow. And I, if I remember correctly, uh, $20 Grubhub is like a set guideline that's like, it's by the bylaws and everything. And this isn't explicitly stated in, in the bylaws, I don't think, I just glanced quickly, but I assume that the funding that they gave to the Senate Initiative Fund was made with the qualification that any money spent on food or specifically Grubhub was made with the qualification of it being $20 per student. Um, that's what my natural assumption would be. Um, sometimes the motions aren't as specific as that and as nuanced as that in finance committee, but I'm pretty sure that's what every motion on Grubhub or funding that could be spent on Grubhub follows. Thank you. AJ? I was gonna make a motion, but I would love to have any other Senator that just wants to comment first, if that's okay with you, Madam Speaker. Um, that's fine with me. Madeline? Um, I have like a proposition or suggestion, you could take it or leave it, but uh, for the USD Terrero store COVID masks, if you don't wanna buy those, um, because they're not necessarily made sustainably, you can take that $795 and that can go towards increasing the Grubhub gift cards to like 20 per person. And then I think also like stickers, I like the idea behind them, but they're also just um, sticky pieces of plastic. And so if you also take that money and then you could possibly increase the amount of people that can access a box. Thank you. Lauren? A point made by a previous Senator. Um, I was gonna bring up the fact that like, um, when a previous Senator was talking about quantity, we already, I don't, I'm not sure how many end of year giveaway signups the TPB board, um, TPB did. And so I know that there's always already been that giveaway. Um, and if they're, mm, I don't know. I was thinking like, if somebody already got a TPB end of year giveaway, would there be a way that we could like guarantee that like other students get this giveaway or? if anybody has any thoughts on that if uh, i think that like that train of thought made sense but someone can comment on that lupe i don't know if you would know that and if not that's okay yeah so i we do keep track of the names of everybody who gets a giveaway so it wouldn't necessarily be a problem to just share that um however I would just like this giveaway is just like a one piece of apparel. There's not like other like kits. I can tell that this kit is kind of more directed to like finals help and sort of thing. So I, that's why I understand. And I'm, I'm happy to like share the list if we wanted to go about it that way. Um, just also, I feel like the two giveaways are slightly different, um, but I'm also open to whatever th additional thoughts are. AJ? I move with the intent to follow precedent and respect for other policies made for other clubs and organizations at USD, I move to approve $3,879.61 of this line, of this package cost. So that's 20 bucks for a grab. Second. So, 
just to be clear, so I get the number right, it's three thousand eight hundred seventy nine dollars and sixty one cents. Yeah. Is that what did I say something else? No, I'm just making sure that I have that number down. So I, when I say it aloud again, I won't mess it up. OK, cool. Yeah. OK, so then you did that math by just funding everything, but then having the Grubhub be twenty dollars. Correct. OK. So there was a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve $3,879.61. Is there any further discussion? Madeline. So could we approve this amount? And then it's up to like the other two senators to figure out the final distribution of the money. Correct because it would be the $20 for basically increasing the, the Grubhub to $20. Thank you. Sabrina? Could it be possible if we approve this like new increase for um, the, what committee, sorry, which committee is doing the ID care package committee? Uh, could they try and meet with someone from like the sustainable committee to just look and see if there's any other ways within this approved budget they could make these more sustainable? Because I do want to improve this and I do want to give them the money. However, a previous center did make good points about making them sustainable. I think that would be up to the sustainability coordinator and uh, Max and Precious if they want to um because i guess you could also make a motion and parliamentarian please correct me if i'm wrong um you can make a motion with like that requirement um but it's not currently like made so there'd have to be like a motion to amend the current motion on the floor does that make sense so you could Basically, with this sort of thing, like funding requests, you can have like a stipulation um, in order for it to like actually like go through. So then you could have that stipulation be that they meet with the sustainability coordinator and talk it out. Um, additionally, like what we do in um, finance committee too is sometimes we give a lump sum to a group of um, to like a center or like a group of an organization so that they can like have some sort of like. Um, grace in how they want to spend the money or if they decide like oh i don't think that we should use this much but then for like the face mask so we're going to put that money towards shipping or something like that um so that's another option but if they're if the senators decided that you would want there to be a requirement there would have to be a motion to amend the motion on the floor and then that amended motion would have to be voted on as well um jen um, to add on to what Maya just shared, um, I would say that if that were the case where a lump sum was uh, given out, um, it would only be a lump sum within the items that have been presented today. So if there is a new item or something different um, completely, I'm not talking about a sustainable sticker instead of a sticker, but I'm talking about um, uh, a charger instead of what a, a face mask. I would say that that is something that you need to understand that there's a difference in. So I just wanna make sure that that's clear um, uh, so that you all are understanding that process. Thank you for the clarification, Lauren. Um, instead of amending the motion, can we just kind of give the IDE committee the benefit of the doubt and ask them to please meet with the sustainability coordinator? Max and Precious, how would you feel about meeting with the sustainability coordinator? And Madeline, how would you feel about meeting with Max and Precious? So, um, yeah, Max and Precious, go first. I think that'd be a really great idea. I'm totally open for that. Yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, it should be a lot easier to uh, work on when there's multiple sometimes too, which is great. 
And Madeline, are you okay or comfortable with taking that on? Absolutely. I'm all ready for it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor having been seconded to approve a moment. $3,879.61. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes. Motion passes. Oops, forgot to lower everyone's hand. Okay, so motion passes. The funding has been approved. Moving on to our last line item under new business is a presentation of the sustainable goods database. So Madeline, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, can I share my screen? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um. Here it is. Uh, I'm also sending the link in the chat. I highly encourage you to look, open it up on your end, just because the hope is that you navigate it yourselves and like um, find out what's working and what's not working. Uh, so here it is. And I'm not gonna do too many uh, introductions, but please uh, ask questions if you don't know where something is or if you don't know what something is, uh, just please ask me and I'll be uh, writing it down so that I know what to clarify and what not to. Sabrina? First of all, it looks amazing. Um, I was just wondering if there was like a Google form or anything where if we like come across a sustainable brand that we think would be really good for the office supplies portion or a restaurant or something, like what the process is for suggesting um, different, I guess, items to be added to the list or database. We don't have a recommendation, uh, Google form, but that is a great idea. Thank you. Sabrina. Um, my just second question would be, where can we refer constituents to find this? Like what um, website or is it under the sustainability committee on the ASG website or the SIBC where it's located at? Right, it's not like completely open yet. So uh, basically when we figure out a good place to uh, publish it, we would add it in a link for like the ASGBC bylaws, I'm pretty sure, because that's where it tells you like, um, refer to these guidelines for purchasing in the fall. And there's the uh, link to the website or database. Um, one other thing that I just thought of right now, Madeline, is just, um, maybe potentially having something for like allergens as well, because that can also be like an accessibility issue. But I think it looks 
amazing. I like the colors too. Fantasy? Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I am in love with this document. Um, I will just add similar to what Maya said. Um, accessibility, I, I think it'd be pretty interesting. I know this is not tech, it's kind of sustainability, maybe not, but just basically like if people were to go in person to these places or even do pickup, like um, determining if they're accessible or not. And I'd love to work with you on that, like physically accessible. Cause like sometimes I order food and then, it, you know, I end up at the restaurant, I go pick it up. And then there's like stairs or like, there's not a paddle to like get my food. And like, it's really hard to navigate. So um, I think that might be nice. I mean, if it's just, you know, as simple as like a check of like, yeah, they have, or they have stairs or they have an elevator or they have a ramp or whatever it is. Um, I think that just kind of ties into the accessibility piece and I can help with that. Um, I just thought, I mean, I'm sure not everyone's gonna be going in person rushing over, but it might be nice just for like the future as well um, as we transition into like pickup and in-person food options. Thank you for the comments. Uh, I would love to partner and uh, work on that. Uh, some good news is that the uh, restaurant side is not gonna go live quite yet because we just want the uh, clubs to kind of focus on the office supplies. And also in the fall, we're not sure that uh, restaurants will be able to come onto campus anyways. So, but yes, for a future resource, this would be great. Also, I know that the marketing um, committee is still taking, um, what am I trying to say? Um, like, I don't forget the word, but they're still taking um, things to market. So then that would be cool as well if this could be posted on the ASG website request. Thank you, Justice. Justice? Yes, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your work on this and just wanted to echo what Maya said. We'd love to collaborate and market this for you. So please um, reach out to us or I'll have one of our um, senators on the committee reach out to you. I also had a question and I'm sorry if you already discussed this, but um, if these are for organizations, I know that the university has like approved vendors that we can go through. Are all of these um, sources approved vendors by any chance? I'm not quite sure about that, but I don't think so. I think we we're just creating a list of possible people so far, yes. I'd also like to make a point that I did not do this by myself and I had a lot of help with the uh, Office of Sustainability and Louise and Marie. Uh, I'm just a little confused. Can I get some clarity again on uh, what the spreadsheet's about? Yeah. So this is kind of just like your all encompassing database to go to if you want to purchase sustainably. So the first tab is for food and drink restaurants. It's a great resource if you're just a student that wants to get to know better, more sustainable restaurants. They're kind of categorized by like easier categories, which is like a socially responsible, for example, women owned, black owned, et cetera. And we also have categories for like vegan. Uh, it's very, uh, all encompassing and then there's also office supplies so the this is mainly for the clubs that need to purchase for example like the creative zone a bunch of markers and things like that and then we also have an events it's kind of like uh we're trying to reorder this so it refers you to just a bunch of businesses and what they have so currently we have um uh, website Earth Hero, other uh, t-shirt design company, bio glitter, and so basically things you want to do for a giveaway or um, I guess other on-campus events. Max? Awesome, thank you. That's quite cool actually. I'm a big fan of it.
Does anyone else have any comments, questions, concerns regarding the SPG references? If not, thank you so much for presenting this resource to us. Thank you, everybody. Okay, and that brings us to final business and hearing of the public. At this time, any senator may take from the table any motion previously laid on the table in the meeting the week before or present urgent business. Any member of the public may voice any concerns to the assembly on non-agenda items. Lauren? Yeah, I had a question and I don't know if it's necessarily applicable, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Is exec planning on putting out a statement in support of the vaccine mandate? Because um, I don't know if many of you have seen, but like there's a lot of parents and alum on our USD Instagram page who are like leaving pretty hateful comments. And I feel like it's important to show our support for administration. Joey. Hi, Lauren. Um, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I, I have been seeing some of the comments under the USD post and they have been um, interesting to say the least in the sense that they're science denying. Um, so thank you for bringing that to our attention and I'll make sure for exec to discuss it at our next exec meeting on Monday. AJ. Sean. Oh, sorry. okay, wait, AJ, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I just had a random question. This is just like a general one. Um, I noticed that election results were supposed to be posted on the 19th. And I just I had a couple of friends ask like, hey, where do I check it? And I try to find it, but I don't think they were posted yet. Will they be on the Instagram or? Uh, Anaya? Okay. Uh, great question. Um, one, they weren't posted officially from us just because we were waiting for appeals. So they were, I can see the um, mistaken communication. That time was more so for candidates to know they'd be notified. And then just for clarity for students, just in case someone like ended up losing when they actually won because they're disqualified, for clarity for other students, so we delay that. Um, but as for how everyone will be notified, um, we haven't decided fully, we'll put it probably on the website, um, but I'm pretty sure there'll be like a mass email sent out or something like that as well um, soon. So TBD on the final version, to be honest, but it's coming in some way. Yeah, and since you're all here and representatives of your constituents and it was shared in Senate, which is a public meeting, you are more than um, welcome to share that information of the election results with your constituents. Lauren? Um, I had kind of more a general question about like senators. So I know that we have a lot of vacancies left for next year. What is quorum tech? Like how many people constitute quorum? Like, can we even run our last, don't we get, we get voted or like confirmed our last week, right? So can we even hold that Senate session with 11 senators? Anaya. Um, yeah, that's a very great question. Um, as I understand it, quorum is just two thirds of active members. So technically, I mean, you could run Senate with three people. Let's never do that, but um, that's a possibility. So yeah, quorum can be met. Sean, did you still wanna say something? Sean. Sorry, I was going to uh, move to adjourn today's meeting, but I was on the condition that there is no further discussion. Is there any further discussion? 
not on the motion, just on final business and hearing the public. Lauren? I think Amanda was trying to raise her hand, but couldn't because she's sharing her screen. Amanda? Always looking. I appreciate you, Lauren. Um, I was just going to let you all know that we are planning on posting the election results on the ASG Instagram later today. So that will be coming out here soon. That's a real time update. Sorry, and I didn't even let you know about that. So. Thanks for bringing that to my attention, Lauren. Is there any more comments, questions, concerns? Can I second the, oh, sorry. I was gonna second Sean's, but I didn't know if it was really a motion yet. Um, parliamentarian, does that count as a motion? I didn't hear him say I moved to, I heard him say I was going to, so okay. I would say, yeah. Okay. Um, wait, Ari, did you have your hand raised? Was it for a question or was it regarding this? Oh, it was regarding that. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Sean. I moved to adjourn today's meeting. Second. There's a motion on the floor, haven't been seconded to adjourn today's meeting. Is there any further discussion? If not, please cast your votes. Danny, can you cast your vote, please? Amazing. Motion passes. This meeting has been adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Amazing job today.